Josh Black, and I'm one of the engineers working on the primary design system here at GitHub. And today we're going to talk about every component, everywhere, all at once. But before we get there, we'll spend just a little bit of time talking about primer, explain what it is, and how we think about design systems here at GitHub. Next, we'll dive into components, talk about how teams can use them, and how the primer team thinks about component usage across GitHub. Finally, we'll mash all of these ideas together to better understand how we can see all of this component usage all at once. So to get started, let's talk about Primer. So Primer is GitHub's design system. It provides design guidance, user interface standards, components, and just so much more. And it provides a way for teams to quickly build out cohesive, accessible products and features. And just as a bonus, it's all open source. As a designer or developer using Primer, you're exposed to a couple of ideas, one of which are primitives. So these are things like colors, typography, spacing, iconography, etc. You're also exposed to this idea of components. This could be in tools like Figma or in your framework of choice, like React, Rails with View Components, or even CSS. And today, components are going to be the star of the show. And we're going to be talking about how teams can use them and how we're going to understand that usage all across GitHub. So to get started, we'll use everyone's favorite component, the button. This is an example of a documentation page for how to use a component in React, and a team can download this package and use it along with these things called props. So props are the way, at least in React, where you're going to configure the component to adapt to maybe your use case or specific context that you're working in. Maybe you'd like to change the size of the button, in which case you could change it from small to medium or large. You could also change the purpose of a button using, using the variant prop. So you could change it from a primary button to a danger button, etc. And when we combine this idea of who's using what component and how, along with props, we get to our idea of component usage. So with component usage, we care a lot about in what products, areas, or contexts do teams use these components, and we want to combine that idea with how those components are being used. Maybe they're using that size prop, maybe they're using the variant prop, or maybe they're using them together. Being able to see all this component usage has a number of benefits for maintainers and for product teams. For maintainers, probably the number one benefit is that you'd be able to really quickly understand adoption. You can see what components are being used, where they're being used. You could tell what the most frequently used component is or the least frequently used component. Another great advantage of this is honestly accessibility. If you can understand the context in which components are being used, you'd be able to appropriately assess if this component is being used in an accessible context. For example, if you expect a component to be within a specific landmark, or if you're working with a component like Tooltip and you wanna make sure that any children of that component are making it so that this is being used in an accessible context. And finally, as a maintainer evolving this code over time, it's really helpful to understand the splash zone or just the impact of a change that you might make to a component. For example, if you wanna tweak a specific prop or component or maybe just remove something entirely, being able to see the component usage and kind of see how much would need to be changed if you make that change is incredibly helpful. From the product perspective, component usage can be really helpful for understanding consistency. If you expect a component to be used across specific pages, being able to see component usage will help you understand if that component is actually being used on those pages or not. It's also really helpful from a discovery use case. Maybe you are new to a component or you're not sure all the ways in which it can be used. Being able to see that component usage can help you uncover new use cases, new scenarios, or just new ways to use that component. And finally, very similar to that splash zone idea, being able to see all the ways in which a component can be used is really helpful if you want to ship a change and you want to ship that change with confidence so that you know you're not accidentally breaking another team. So this is great. We would love to have this component usage information. It helps a ton from the maintainer perspective and the product perspective. So what's the catch? And really that leads us to our fundamental question of, well, how do we do this? Because there are several key challenges that come up when we start to approach this problem. And really the first one is just analysis. So how do we actually download all of, all of these different projects and these files and actually parse the code in a way to understand the component usage that we've been talking about. Next up, any, pr 
process that we pick, well, it kind of needs to work for any project that's using Primer. So it really needs to work at scale. Finally, if we get all of this information, well, how do we actually combine it together so that anyone across GitHub can search and use this data? And this is where we get to the fun part, bringing everything together all at once. And it starts with four-ish core ideas. These, these include things like repositories. So once again, these are those projects and files that are actually using Primer. We have packages, and this is what the Primer team ships for teams to actually download, install, and use um, that offer things like components. We have the components themselves and the way teams can configure them, which are props. And when we're talking about all at once here and we're talking about these ideas, we're trying to combine them again, combine them together once again to answer two big questions for usage. Where are these components being used and how are they being used? So to do this, we ended up building a tool. If you're a hubber, you can access it at gh.io slash primer query. And we're going to go and look at this tool and see some of the common queries that we can use to answer some of these component usage questions all at once. So I'll open this up. And here you can see primer query. On the top part of the page is the query bar. The search syntax is very similar to the GitHub flavor search syntax. On the left-hand side is this kind of summary sidebar, and it will give you a summary of all those different ideas that we were talking about earlier, like repositories, components. In this case, we have attributes, but you can think of those as props, and it will be automatically updating every time the query changes. So let's actually get started by searching across every repo in the primer org. So these are all open source repos, and we can see as soon as we typed in that query that the whole view gets updated and it's going to tell us a summary of this query. In this case, we can see that there are 63 different component instances or different ways in which components are being used. And we can see breakdowns of which are the most common or least common. We can see attributes as well. And we can even filter this down even further by typing in maybe the name of the component that we're interested in. So we'll use our favorite component button. And here you can see that it filtered down just a little bit more than what it was before, but unfortunately it's matching not just button, but other things. So by default, these matches are a little bit fuzzy. And if you'd like to have an exact match, well, you can wrap this whole thing in double quotes. And now we can see a breakdown of how the button component is used across all the repos that we're collecting information for in the primer org. We, so we can see things like the different attributes being used. We can see the repos from which we can see button being used and we can see the packages in this case the primer react package we could filter down even further by maybe looking for that variant prop so in this case we'll use attribute variant to find that prop and now we can see all the ways in which the variant prop is being used across in this case two repos in the primer org and the best part is say we were really curious about a specific usage well, we have a link to the file that when we open, we'll actually go directly in code to where that component is being used, which is great. So a lot of these examples were for the primer react package, but maybe you're curious about another package. In this case, we'll talk about octacons and octacons react. So we could clear this whole search and look for primer octacons react. And now we have another query. And in this case, it's telling us all the different ways icons are being used across, in this case, the primer org. Similar to searching for the variant prop, let's look for, in this case, size. And we can see all the different ways size is being used. And once again, when you go into the file, we can see exactly where it's being used. So in this case, we are looking across the primer org, but this also works across the GitHub org. So let's dive into a public GitHub repository called GitHub Docs. And we can see that once again, we have all of these results showing up across different packages for this specific project. And we can do the same kind of queries that we were doing before. Let's grab button in this case. And we can see once again, the fuzzy match matches a bunch of different components. And we can see in the summary side by, side, sidebar here that icon button is used a ton. So we could refine the search. Maybe we'll look for icon button. And we can see all the different ways that it's being used. Maybe we're interested in accessibility. So we wanna see all the different ways the ARIA attributes are being applied to this button. So we'll say, attribute aria and then we can see a breakdown of kind of any prop with the aria dash prefix being used on icon buttons and so yeah 
This query tool has a number of different ways to interact with different repos, different components. You can filter things down, you can use different packages, and you can see directly in the project how components are being used. So if you're interested in learning more about this in your Hubber, definitely join us over at Primer React. We'd love to answer any questions that you might have or talk more about this. And yeah, that's everything that I have today for you. Thanks so much for listening. Thank <laughs> you.